So having looked at uh, having looked at the idea of, of solubility of sparing the soluble salts and uh, having defined the solubility product in our previous lessons we made a definition of solubility product. We also looked at how to write equations for solubility of sparing the soluble salts. And you also looked at how to write expressions for KSP. I left with you about I left with you about uh, thirty nine salts whose expressions and equations you had to write. However, I will look at a few of them to remind you to see whether I have not forgotten. We shall write the equation for solubility of calcium ethane dioate, also sometimes called calcium oxalate. Okay, this one is written as Ca. C2O4 is a solid. Remember the calcium ion and the oxalate ion, both of them have a charge of two. So their charges cross out in such a compound, such that uh, that's the formula of the compound. If you write the equation for solubility of calcium methane dioxide, it will be this kind of equation. We shall have calcium ions. Then plus ethane dioxide ions. That is the equation. Then the expression for KSP will be calcium ions multiplied by molar concentration of uh, oxalate ions. That's how we would write the equation and expression for solubility. Product. I'll look at two more salts. I'll look at silver sulfate. Silver sulfate is also sparing is soluble. So its equation for solubility will be silver to sulfate solid. Why a two here? Because silver has valence one, the sulfate radical has charge negative two on it. Add aqueous. A reversible equation because this is an equilibrium will give us two silver ions and a sulfate ion. This implies that the expression for KSP here will be silver ion is squared molar concentration multiplied by the molar concentration of sulfate ions. I hope you get me. I look, yes, at, I look at one other. I look at copper iodate, copper two iodate. This one, the formula is copper iodate. Remember the iodate radical has a charge of negative one and the copper has a valence of two. So that's the formula of copper. Iodate is also a sparing the soluble salt. Plus aqueous, reversible will give us copper two ions plus iodate ions. The iodate ions are two of them. The moment you fail to write a correct equation for each of these calculations, we shall see later. And even the expression for KSP will be wrong. So the equation here is expression for KSP is this one copper two ions multiplied by iodate ion is. But because of this coefficient here, the iodate ion molar concentration is squared. So having had that uh, 
summarize the review of what we covered yesterday. Today, I want us to see more about solubility equilibria. And we shall begin with uh, conditions under which solubility product is valid. When is solubility product valid? When does solubility product hold? When do we carry out measurements of solubility product under what conditions? That's what I want us to see. There are basically three conditions under which solubility product holds or is valid. One of them is that the temperature at which the experiment is carried out must be constant. So beta product is only constant at a given temperature. Why do we say temperature must be constant? Remember we said that when you increase temperature or decrease it, solubility of some salts is affected. So you must keep constant at a given temperature. In most of these experiments, we normally use the room temperature 25 degrees Celsius, such that our solubility product constant does not change. Remember it's temperature that affects most of the equilibrium constants. Other factors rarely do so. We saw that under um, chemical equilibria, those who covered it. Then the other condition under which solubility product is valid is that the solution must be saturated. If the solution is not saturated, then all measurements you carry out for solubility product are null and void. So the temperature must be constant, solution must be saturated. If your solution is not saturated, then the uh, solubility product measurement you make turns to be invalid. Turns out to be invalid. Are we together? So that's why we said that you must dissolve the salt in solution until a saturated solution is formed such that you get a very good amount of ions. Remember these salts are not so much soluble in, uh, in water. We need a, some, somehow a measurable concentration of them that we can titrate with maybe another reagent, determine that concentration as we are going to see in the experiments hereafter. Then the electrolyte must be sparingly soluble. The electrolyte must be sparingly soluble. Now you may wonder why I'm using the term electrolyte and sometimes I use the word salt. Actually, for me, I would prefer the word electrolyte whenever I'm talking about solubility product. Why? Calcium sulfate is sparingly soluble and as, is an electrolyte. The D2 sulfate is sparingly soluble and is an electrolyte. Um, silver chloride. Silver sulfate, all of these ones are sparingly soluble and are electrolytes because they are ionic compounds. And although, they, apart from being electrolyte, they are also salts. However, there are cases where we may have compounds like lead to hydroxide. We may have silver hydroxide may have silver hydroxide. We may have aluminum hydroxide. All these ones, you know, they are performed by precipitation. They are sparingly soluble. Barium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. All these are sparingly soluble compounds, but we cannot call them salts. These are not salts. Actually, they are bases. So the most suitable word to use for hydroxides, in this case, is the term electrolytes. Are we together? Yes, teacher. Okay. 